Hi, I'm Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We're at the 2011 New York Amp Show at the Fractal Audio Room with Matt. Matt, how's it going? Pretty well, thanks. How are you? Good. And we just heard Harrison Whitford playing uh, the XTC Blue patch on the new Axe FX 2. Right, that's right. The Axe FX 2 is new for this show, and uh, there's an awful lot that's new in the box. Um, I guess we can probably start by uh, saying that it's got twice the power of the Axe FX Ultra, which is our former flagship model. Uh, which was when you say twice the power, do you mean twice the processor yeah. power and speed? That's right. It's got actually two physical processors, um, each of which is identical to that which was in the Axe FX Ultra. So it's a lot of uh, DSP horsepower under the hood. And uh, it's put to good use, too. The... Uh, the hardware itself is upgraded in a lot of other ways as well. As you can see here on the front panel, it's got a larger display. And uh, over on the right side, you'll see that uh, there are now a set of quick control buttons and knobs. We've got XY, which is used for channel switching and fast menu access. And we've got uh, ABCD knobs, which are used for uh, editing more than one parameter on a single screen with a knob instead of just having the value wheel you've now got those as well and they also double as uh, controller sources so you can assign them to different things for different effects and different patches okay now what does it translate to having those two processors in there does that just allow you to have a finer um, emulation of different amps and effects or yeah that's a good way to put it the um the, the new technology is called G2 modeling technology, and uh, it takes a lot more horsepower to run. Uh, the amp emulations are even more realistic, um, and one of the CPUs is entirely dedicated to the amp sounds. Uh, the other is used for you know, housekeeping and all of the effects and uh, handling the USB communications and everything else. So we've got a whole chip in there just dedicated to making those two amps sound as great as possible. And uh, you know, you'll hear some of that. How many um, amp emulations do you have in there and effects? And you want to just run down that really fast? I know there's so much in there yeah, that, that we could talk probably somewhere. for an hour or so. But. That number changes. It's growing constantly. I, I think it's somewhere around 60 or 70 amps right now, uh, many of which are uh, ported over from the Ultra, although they've all been revisited uh, because the new technology really just starts f with a whole new core. Um, and uh, a lot of those are all new amps uh, for the XFX2. Uh, there's a couple Cameron uh, amps, um, a lot of other different channels and different uh, amps. Um, the amps are also uh, accompanied by a whole new range of speaker cabinet emulations. Um, we've got 50 onboard factory cabs, and those are made up of a combination of different sources. We've got our own, and uh, then we've got uh, sort of a, some custom blends that we created from... Uh, selections from the red wires and own hammer libraries which are third-party impulse response libraries and they just you know they bring a whole uh, new level of versatility and realism to the cabinet block uh, axe FX fans will also be thrilled to know that the number of onboard slots for your own impulse response files is up from 10 to 50. Now, you guys have some pretty pri high profile artists who use your product, Dweezil Zappa, Steve Vai. Yeah. Um, are the emulations of different cabinets and amps based, like when you go in here and look up something, are any of them based on actual artists' models? Like it says, I don't know, Dweezil's. X brand head, or does it, or is it more like 1968 slant cab Marshall yeah, or whatever? It's the latter, and I can tell you at the same time that you know Dweezil and our other artists are already using uh, those libraries that I mentioned, you know the Red Wires and the Own Hammer. You've got a few um, patches lined up for us to hear. I should mention before we hear those that we're actually miking this through. Um, PA monitors. Yeah, right. We're not actually going through the 412 cab that everyone sees here. So this gives you uh, a great idea of the versatility that these this unit has. Yeah. Uh, in order to use the speaker simulations, we want to have a full range speaker system. So that's uh, that's why that is. But there's a whole lot of improvement to the I.O. on this unit as well. Um, 
the outputs have been dis redesigned with uh, a greatly reduced noise floor. Um, Output 2 in particular is uh, is really per ideally uh, designed for use with amps. We've got a lot of players who use what we call the four cable method, and uh, the, the Axe FX was now designed with that in mind as well. So there's a lot of uh, great options there. We've got a headphone jack on the front panel, which is new. We've got a USB port on the back, which gives you a, a host of great computer integration features that we can maybe look at later. Um, and uh, there's also a, a little bit of improvement in the fact that the uh, AES uh, is now in and out. So uh, some, some nice uh, stuff there for the studio cats. Cool. So what's the first patch we're going to hear? Uh, let's see. Why don't we jump in uh, right where we left off with a little bit more of that Euro Blue, and then Harrison can just select from the other five oh. uh, presets that we've laid out there. I think we've got a 59 base or uh, a... Uh, a model that's based on a 59 bass man uh, uh, in number one, a, a couple of plexi sounds in uh, three and four, and out in number five is uh, the Friedman, uh, uh, one of the Friedman amps by our good friend Dave Friedman. So now we're hearing a plexi. Right. Now we're on the plexi normal. So tell us about that. Right, that's uh, the normal channel of uh, uh, plexi 1959. <laughs> Here's the treble channel of the same amp. And kick the drive on at some point, and then we'll demonstrate XY switching, which is a new feature of the Axe FX2. Um, the amp, the cab, the drive, the delay, and six other blocks uh, are each equipped with two complete, fully independent sets of parameters. So you can dial in a sound uh, and then change to a completely different sound without needing either another preset or uh, the extra overhead, the horsepower that's used by multiple blocks. So uh, I think we've got this set up for like a, sort of a light tube screamer action and then a, a sort of a higher gain uh, thing we call the BB Pre here. Cool. So. That last tone change was when you kicked on the XY foot switch. Explain a little bit what happened there. Right. Um, well, once the drive pedal was on, it, it started out in its uh, what we call the X state, which was, you know, we dialed in the, the settings for that. And then uh, by changing over to Y, you can dial in a second completely different drive pedal in this case. So the XY changes between those pedals without having to use two blocks. Okay, Matt. So naturally, a uh, rack unit you know, with this kind of processing power and, you know, that's intended for heavy studio use and live use has some heavy-duty 
computer application. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. New for the AxeFX2 uh, is USB connectivity, which lets you connect your computer to your AxeFX with a single USB cable. And that uh, provides a host of great features. We've got uh, a 2x4 audio interface. Uh, we've got high-speed uh, bi-directional MIDI. So between those, uh, those things, you, you, you can uh, get away with a lot less third-party hardware, which was always sort of a, you know, a, a source of headaches for, uh, for people using computers with these kinds of rigs. What's a quick example of what um, a lot of players are going to really dig about this um, is it called it connectivity? Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing we're looking at here is our editor, Axe Edit. Uh, now, uh, when Axe Edit launches, instead of having to install drivers and select a third-party MIDI interface and fight to get it working, you can just connect uh, to the Axe FX through the, the built-in USB. It also communicates at four times the speed, or I think something like four times the speed of uh, traditional MIDI. So the, the connections and the, the back and forth communication happen a lot faster. Uh, we've also got a new component in Axe Edit here called Axe Manage, um, which is a, a great manager, librarian, uh, companion to the product. Uh, it replaces something that used to be called Preset Manager, and uh, it allows you to uh, basically organize and arrange your sounds. Uh, it's got some great drag and drop capabilities. It lets you know which sounds uh, in the computer have changed and need to be updated on the hardware. And it's got a lot of other great features and utilities here. Folks will be able to download that for free from our website. What else is new with that, the AxeFX2? Right, okay, well, uh, the USB also gives you the ability to use the AxeFX2 as an audio interface. So you can play back uh, tracks that you've recorded, and uh, those will be mixed in at the main outputs of the AxeFX, so you can play along or you can monitor a project you're working on. Uh, at the same time, if you play a dry, direct, raw track back into the AxeFX, you can set it up so that uh, you can reamp and record it back. So that's a really great feature that a lot of people are going to be happy with. Very cool. Now, naturally, with that processing power and all you're showing us, uh, we know there's way more to learn about this unit. Where can people go to find out that stuff? Yeah, that's right. Uh, www.fractalaudio.com is our website. Uh, the owner's manual is online, and there's going to be a lot of uh, other new great updates to the website in coming days. Cool. Thanks, Matt. All right. You're welcome. Thanks, Harrison. I'm Sean Hammond, and you're watching PremierGuitar.com.